everybody. It's Corey at the Reset Girl. I cannot remember the last time I've done my happy hands. <laughs> it's been a while since I've made a video, I know, but I have been working on something that I just love so much. I was really excited to make this video and uh, share it with you. If you are visiting my YouTube channel for the first time because you heard about my prayer binder on our podcast, The First Love Club, welcome! I am going to be talking about this little beauty today. It's a half size um, binder, so it is not the full letter size. It does look a little large on the video because <laughs> I'm kind of zoomed in, so I just want to be clear. It is the smaller, like, half letter size. So um, about three years ago, I began seeing a lot of different prayer binders on Pinterest and I was super intrigued and I watched different videos and I stumbled onto a website called Stone Soup for Five by Miss Carrie Danker and she went into depth on her prayer binder and it was so inspiring and I wish I had actually created mine three years ago instead of waiting so long. And it was um, really interesting to see this tool that so many women had created just using a really simple binder. Um, and over time, I gathered quite a lot of examples. I've watched a lot of videos. And so finally one day I was just like, it, enough is enough. I'm just gonna make one for, for myself. And now it's one of, it's my favorite um, part of my God time every morning, which used to be, I, I want to say my Bible reading was kind of my favorite, but I've, I've now evolved into, um, this because now I feel like I'm now I feel like I'm praying with more, I don't know how, how to say this word that I'm trying to think of, but I just feel a little bit more organized and how I'm praying. I feel like I'm hitting a lot of topics that are meaningful to me. I feel like I'm being more effective and it's, I feel like this is sort of like, um, it's sort of creating that foundation for you to become a really good prayer warrior. So if you are considering making one, I would say do not hesitate to do so, but jump in. And the really great thing about this is that there is no perfection required. You don't have to make it beautiful. Most of the prayer binders I've seen are really simple. They're just lined paper. They're made with the, you know, the little tab um, dividers that you just buy in the package. So I, I made mine more crafty because that's kind of like how I am. And I love looking at something that's really beautiful and inspiring to me. So I put that effort in, but it is not a requirement. Avery makes um, half letter size little tab dividers that you can easily use for this project. This is, um, this is a, a unique little binder. This one came from Office Depot, I believe. And I think it's the Office Depot brand, which is right here on the back. And what's unique about this one is that they put this, um, the binding mechanism on to the actual back cover and not on the spine. The benefit of that is that the only thing that's kind of moving is the cover. So your pages stay completely stationary. They're not bending around the, um, the rings, which tends to happen when the binding mechanism is here. They, they start bending because they're constantly being forced around the uh, rings. So that's kind of, that's my preference if I can find one. Now I will caution you and say that the half letter size binders are very minimal in options. I could only find, like this is a one inch and that's the most common. Target sells them. All of the um, box, big box stores for office supplies sell them. Uh, Target has their own up and up brand and they actually offer a one and a half inch binder. Um, but it's not with the mechanism on the back cover. It's down the center. And as much as I prefer this style, I probably will end up upgrading to that because the smaller binder, and I'm guessing that's true of the smaller binders, they just fill up a lot faster. And I did kind of use bulkier material when I made my, pro you know, when I made my dividers. They're made from scrapbook paper versus the really thin dividers that come commercially in the package. And 
there's nothing wrong with using the, the plain type. I mean, this isn't really supposed to be about <laughs> the beautiful, you know, products that you use. Um, I, um, I just enjoyed making it for making it sake, but I would say that, um, what I enjoy most is actually working through the binder. So in my prayer time, um, so what I wanted to point out is how I had organized mine just by looking at the tabs. This is kind of my own idea of how I wanted to do mine versus some of the others I kind of saw. So I had, um, a couple years ago, I had come across a book that had really, um, influenced me in my prayer life and really helped me understand like how to actually pray. I think a lot of Christians, like, um, they struggle with that because it's not something you really admit to each other. Like, you know, we're always told to pray, but I don't really know how to pray. And I always felt like all I was doing was ever just like asking God for stuff. I don't feel like it was a, an opportunity for a two-way conversation or that I could even expect that. So this book was called Powerful Prayers in the War Room. Powerful Prayers in the War Room. I believe that's what, <laughs> I believe that's what it's called. Powerful Prayers in the War Room. And it was written um, before the movie War Room came out. Um, it was written by a pastor uh, who has had international ministries his whole career. And it was just really simple. It was a small little ebook on Amazon. I'm going to make sure to, um, I will link it down below in the description of this video, as well as all of the other resources that I talk about uh, whenever possible, I will link those as well. But one of the things that I learned from this little book was that he suggests that you um, pray during your um, God time. And each letter of the word pray stands for something specific. And this particular model of prayer is, is it, the example is shown to us in how Jesus prayed, um, you know, our, our heavenly father, hallowed be thy name. So you start off your prayer time with praising God praising him, which is what my first tab is in mine. And then the next part of my prayer time is repent. So confessing my sins. And then the next is asking a for ask. And then the very last part of my prayer time is why for yield. Some, some people say like, yes, like why for yes, either way, yielding is really the act of kind of quieting yourself. You've kind of done all the talking up to this point. So it's the time of giving God his opportunity to talk to you in that very still small voice that we're told to listen for. So it's about quieting your spirit and being still. So that's the, um, the, the way that I pray through my binder. Now, when it comes to the ask section, I divided it further. So I have, um, and I'm going to go through this specifically, but I just wanted to point out the tabs right now. So I have a, an ask section that is made up of my daily prayers. And then after I finish my daily prayers, I s switch to this weekly tab. And depending on what day of the week it is, I would flip to that day and then pray those prayers I have listed out. So today happens to be Monday. So that would be the section I would then pray, pray through. So let me go ahead and show you what that looks like in my book. So um, in addition to walking you through, I'm going to talk about some of the features of it and how I kind of put it together because I know that I got a lot of crafty girls watching me. So you might be interested in some of the ideas that I applied here in my little book. So one thing I did, um, I've never thought to do this before, but it makes such an impact is I actually cut some scrapbook paper and I inserted it into the little, um, like the, the pocket and I actually kind of glued it down. Not really hard. I mean, I can pull it up if I wanted to, as you can see here. But it's this kind of like linen type paper. I got it at Hobby Lobby. It's one of my favorite patterns. And so the pocket is still useful. I can still slip things into it. Um, but I just kind of cut, you know, cut it to size and slipped it in. And I did the same thing. I only had one square of uh, 12 by 12. So this was about how much um, paper... I got out of that square in order to line it, but I thought it was really beautiful. Every time I open it, I'm like, ah. So I um, cut all these uh, 
the little diamonds with a punch that I will list down below. It's my newest punch and I am in love. And I added gold glittery letters to uh, spell out the words bless me and deep. So I added that and some gold reinforcement stickers that are just make it look super snazzy. So this is really just kind of like my cover page or my dashboard of my um, binder. And then I backed it with a different scrapbook paper. A word of caution, um, if you are thinking about making your own dividers, if I had it to do over again, I would probably do them a little differently. In this case, I wouldn't um, back my scrapbook paper with the, uh, a second sheet of cardstock. I would probably use a much thinner material, which I did on some of my dividers, but I probably would have, should have done it to all of them because even just adding two sheets of cardstock together does create bulk. So I noticed that my binder felt a little bulkier than I would have liked for just what was in it, just like the minimum that's in it. So if you were thinking of doing the same thing, it's just something to consider. You want to get as much actual content in here as possible. So it might be something uh, worth considering when you're building yours. So in this case, I added a couple like embellishment pages. Um, I had ripped this page out of a hymnal and it was uh, the song is He's Calling You, which I thought was really beautiful. I added my gold reinforcements so that it would stay nice and um strong and I happened to go on Pinterest and I printed I typed up a bunch of quotes that I thought were really awesome this one's from Brittany Moses who is very wise some of my favorite quotes on Pinterest have come from her and um, it happened to coordinate with this particular topic so it's all about your calling so I thought oh that's perfect and I attached it with a little bit of glue stick so it's just a nice little reminder. It's just a little fun thing to look at when I open up my book. Another fun thing, but also has a practical purpose, is I took a sewing pattern envelope and reinforced it with some matte scotch tape, especially over the holes to make sure it just stayed strong. And I embellished it with some gold foil stickers. God is with her, she will not fail. On the back side, I cut a... Um, an opening into the actual envelope and I reinforced it with washi so it wouldn't rip. And then when my mom and I were making our prayer binders together, I noticed that she had slipped in some scrapbook paper to line the inside of her envelope and I thought that was really cool. So I basically lifted that idea off of her, which was really fun to say like, oh, I learned something from my mom. Um, I put some stickers in here. Um, these are these fun little journaling stickers that I'm loving. And then some honeys that I put in my little pocket in case I ever want to embellish something or add a note. And then um, I, moving on, this is my very first of my prayer time uh, dividers. So I just wanted to make a note. So um, one of the habits that I have is with all of the dividers I've made for my A5 planners, I put a lot of love and attention into them. So when I'm kind of like not using that planner or maybe I've decided to make a new divider. I was storing my old dividers in a box and I happened to come across it when I was decluttering and I thought, you know what, I wanna repurpose these. So I went through them all and tried to find as many as I could use in, in this particular project. And this was one of them. This was from my original Faithful Girl Planner. And what I discovered with an A5 divider, if you find that you have already made A5 dividers or have commercially made ones, Basically, if you try and put them in a letter size, like a half letter size binder like this, all you have to do is really is cut off the edge where you've already punched it for the six holes. You cut off that strip and it's totally the same width as the rest of um, a, a half letter size divider would be. You have a little bit of a shortage here. It's like a quarter of an inch, and I think it's so minimal that you can't even really tell. So I was really happy to know that some of my dividers that I loved so much that I'd made were gonna get new life in here, so, and perfectly. So I just wanted to point that out, that they can be repurposed for this project if you want to. I know a lot of us buy dividers, like you can buy them commercially made and with you know a coupon or, they're sitting in a, in a planner you're not using anymore. So if you want to try a very simple style binder like this, you totally can. You can adapt um, those dividers in here.
So flipping that over, um, this was from our wedding day. <laughs> we made each other laugh a lot that day. I have so many pictures of me laughing like with my, white, my mouth wide open, but I left it in here because I love it. And it's just a reminder of when I praise God, one of the things that I praise him um, for so much is giving me such a wonderful husband. And he was so worth the wait. Um, so the first thing I put in here was a scripture that I found that was specifically about praising God. And I happened to come across it in my reading and I just thought it was beautiful. And I added a honey to it before I printed it out. So you might be wondering how I ended up with this type of paper in here. And I wanted to show you, um, what I had done. So I bought a ream of 28 pound paper. I, to, to me, 28 is like the minimum I would want for like writing, like printing uh, planner inserts. I usually do 32 because it's so luxurious, but I also am aware that this type of binder is much smaller. I have these one inch rings. So 28 sounded good to me. I had them cut it in half for me. And then I had a nice big thick stack of this little half letter sized um, paper. So as I find scriptures that I love or a quote on Pinterest, and I can just retype it up in my word program. And, uh, in this case I used publisher and then I just added an image to the page and printed it. So that's how I, I, I ended up with this and I would, I highly recommend trying it. Um, so that you, it's really easy to just print things when you have all your supplies ready to go. On the back of that um, page, I put a, some of the lines from the song, I Can Only Imagine, um, back here, which I think is a glorious uh, song. And it definitely makes me think of the ultimate way of praising God is, you know, the being with him. And that's what we'll be doing for a really long time. <laughs> so, um, and then I went through Psalms and, and additional scriptures, and I just found as many scriptures as I could that were specifically about praising God, and I typed them up for myself. And then I started writing, you know, adding more. So this paper comes from a package of paper. This is the Avery brand. Um, hat, like the, I think they call these mini binders. And so this is their mini binder filler paper. So they punched it for like seven holes. I think it's so that it goes into a Franklin Covey is my guess or day timer. So it's like friendly with that, but it works for this um, three ring. And so this is just easy paper to grab and write on. And that's really the key. Whatever is the easiest for you to do is what you should be using. If printing things out feels like too much work, then by all means, just write it out. Writing out scripture is lovely exercise anyway. So just to clarify what I do with these is I will actually start my, my praise time is reading through one of these to God. And, um, sometimes I'll make it more personal. Like I'll change some of the words so that it's like me speaking to him. If it's not already, um, and I'll, I'll embellish, like I'll add my own, as I get going, you'll find sometimes when you start really like, just kind of like melting into the words is the way I look at it. I find myself like embellishing and adding and kind of thinking about things God's done for me and, and attributes of God. And it, oh, it's just glorious. And that's the point. That is what praise should feel like. It's like your spirit is just filling in all of the, the little gaps as you're, as you're reading. And, and again, it's one of those things where it feels like sometimes it feels a little bit like these are training wheels. This is like for me to kind of get used to doing this. And, and eventually I'll get strong enough on my own to be able to just say all kinds of things to God that will feel like a Psalm you know, and, and so I really like this. It's probably my favorite part of the, my prayer time is the praising because I guess of how it feels. And when I think about him and I started off a new list of scriptures that I want to continue writing out this little journal card is something I started doing, um, is I made a little template where the holes line up. A journal card will fit either here or here in a binder, a mini binder. And I started a list of words um, that I notice in my Bible a lot about God, like steadfast. I love that word so much and loving kindness. So I wanted to start a word, a list of um, special words that, that talks about God and that makes my heart sing. So I added those to that little journal card. And the fun thing about journal cards 
um, is that you can, they're so versatile in a project like this. So I have different ways of using them, which I'll continue to show you, but how I um, add them into my, um, my binder is I use a single hole punch because that way, I, this is my template, so I just match up a new one like this and then I just line up the holes and then punch and punch like that. So then I have space to write a scripture on the back if I wanted to and add it to my, um, to my binder. Now for this type of paper, I forgot to show you that what I use to punch this is they make a mini three hole punch. Is that not adorable? And it's kind of lightweight too for, for what it is. So it, it, it's actually very convenient. It's, this one's made by Staples, but I bought it on Amazon and I'll link that below. But they, I've not, I don't think I even saw it when I was in the store, um, but I'll, I'll link it. But it is an option and it's super convenient for punching if you're doing a lot of papers or your dividers. But a single hole punch is also super sweet too. I mean, if you're just adding a page every now and then, this can work just fine. So moving on, um, I started a list of the names of God and I just did this like yesterday. So I'm going to just start filling this out with other names of God and what it means. I find that this is also helpful during my praise time is actually calling him by these different names and thanking him for being a God who provides, being a God who heals. So it's just a good reminder for me too, as I'm working through a list like that of just reminding myself who it is that I'm praising. And then I know that praise is really about being appreciative of who God is, where thanksgiving is about thanking him for what he's done. But I felt like it also should be in my praise him section. So I started a list of specific things that I felt like I wanted to thank him for things that he's done for me. So, um, I started that I covered, <laughs> you'll notice that I have put like random sticky notes in places and it's cause I was just kind of covering things that I was a little too, I don't know, embarrassed to share on YouTube. So <laughs> you can appreciate that though. Prayer is such a personal thing. So I just, I just happen to have this covering up the rest of my list. And then I move on after the praise um, time is I move on to the uh, repent part. Repenting is probably a Christian's like least favorite part of the process, I would assume. Um, I don't love it, but um, it's definitely what we're asked to do and told to do because that's how God is able to cleanse us and reset us, basically. Um, what I loved about this particular divider that I made is this was originally an A5 divider, um, but I used this little reset girl um, for life's little mistakes. This is one of the pieces from my scrapbook collection with um, simple stories, the letters too. And I just thought that was such a beautiful little symbol for this divider because that's sort of how I envision God when we come to him and confess our sins, that he has like this big eraser and he just kind of wipes, <laughs> he wipes our record clean. And I just love that. And so I wanted to remind myself like that's really why it's important to do this. So in my repent um, uh, section, here's another uh, one of the pages that I pulled out of the hymnal, The Great Redeemer, which is, I think, a, a way of looking at that whole repentance thing. But here in Acts 319, I added this journal card to it. It says, repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that time of refreshing may come from the Lord. So it's a reminder to um, us why we repent so that our sins can be wiped out. So as, as I am reminded of that and flipping the page, I have here um, a prayer for repentance. Um, this was one of those things I found on Pinterest, my favorite resource, and it came from a website called prayerforanxiety.com. They had pinned a bunch of different graphics to Pinterest with different um, little prayers on them. I didn't love the colors schemes and all that. So what I did is I just sat there and typed up each of them on my own and put them on here. I forgot to add the, the name of the website to this page, but the others have them. But I just like to point out credit to things. Um, and so it's a good idea for yourself if you choose to do it to always put like where you got it from 
not only to give credit if you share it, but also to remind yourself like, wow, if I loved this, they might have had other great stuff. And if you have more time, you can go back and look to see what else they had. So this particular prayer of repentance is lovely. And by the time I get down to this free me Jesus, I'm like ready to go and start naming off <laughs> some of the things that I know that I struggle with. So it really, it like, it's gotten my heart in the right place by the time I get there. Psalm 51 is a, is a prayer of repentance as well. So that might be something I choose to do instead of my prayer because I like to mix it up. Um, under this sticky note are a few things I jotted down that I know are like issues for me. And I didn't want to create this laundry list of all these things I do wrong. What I wanted to do was kind of look at them more as goals. And I got that idea from someone who posted it on social media and I wish I had saved it and could go back and look at it again. I thought it was such a great idea because when we're faced constantly with our failures, it could be a little discouraging. So I can name things easily, and I think we all can if we really thought about it. But this were these were kind of like little gentle items, I guess, and things that I can consider being more of like, Lord, you know, these are things I want to aspire to do, you know, to change, rather than I've done all these horrible things. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so. I just kind of jotted down a few things there. And I randomly, you may have noticed, like I've been kind of adding um, like washi onto some of my pages just to sort of like make them more fun. Like here's some washi here. This page is from an ephemera pack I bought on, on Etsy and it would like fit perfectly in here. I wish I could find more because I think this would be really fun to like just write on. So um, Etsy has fantastic vintage ephemera to just add and embellish in something like this, just to kind of like make it more snazzy. Um, so here we have the beginning of my ask section of my binder. On the back side of this um, page, I put a little quote on a journal card and a couple layering circles. If you would ask, then ask and come back yet again. That's from Isaiah. And it's such a good reminder that sometimes the things we ask for, we have to keep coming back and asking some prayers take some time. God's not going to just answer them right away. So it's about being diligent. So it was just a nice reminder as I, I look at it and heading into my ask time, like, oh yeah, so don't get weary of asking. Sometimes that's what God is looking for is our faithfulness. So as I flip over my ask section, I kind of consider this area my emergency room for prayer. So this is where I would flip over and start my daily prayers. Before I get there, though, this is where I kind of stop for like the emergency type prayers. Sometimes, especially on social media, you'll see people post things like, can you pray? This is what's going on. Um, your family members might share, hey, I'm facing surgery tomorrow, or I just got a bad diagnosis from the doctor, or, you know, there's so many things people will ask for, for prayer that's urgent. Um, people you know in real life, people on social media. And I saw this happening a lot, and I just don't want to be a person that says, oh, I'll pray for you, and then I don't pray for you. So one of the things that I kind of felt like I wanted to start trying to do is kind of like a stop, drop, and roll <laughs> kind of response. So when I see someone say, hey, I really need prayer for this, like I want to get into the habit of being an intercessory prayer. And so I went and looked up some scriptures and prayers that I felt like are kind of the more common things you see a lot, and most of them have to do with healing. Healing. Um, I went on to crosswalk.com and there was a couple prayers that were written out. Um, this one was by Max Lucado and this was Dr. Charles Stanley. So um, I wrote them all out. And so when I see someone who's saying, you know, I have this situation, I'm going to pray for that person right there when I see it. Um, so I looked up some healing scriptures as well. This particular scripture, um, may he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purpose. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. I just think that's such a beautiful promise. And, an, and for someone who's doing intercessory prayer is a great reminder of, you know, that you, if you feel that burden to pray for people, there's a reason. Like that's something the Holy Spirit is kind of putting on your heart. And here to me was, 
it felt like, Corey, this is kind of a promise to an intercessory prayer is that God's going to fulfill your, your requests and that his saving strength, God can rescue us from any, any situation, can change any bad diagnosis. He has the power to do that. And so I wanted to go into um, prayer with that reminder of that. So when I see requests, when I am told, when I, my friends tells me they're having a situation, this is where I would turn to, to start with. Um, so if something is going on though, with me personally, I will move this, these prayers here that I keep in the back, I'll move them into my emergency room if I'm struggling. So I pinned them here in the back of my ask section. So I found these three prayers and I think most of us can identify with these issues. So prayer when I feel down, prayer for when under attack and prayer for strength and trials. These, again, all, these were all graphics that I found on prayer. I'll lift it up there. Prayerforanxiety.com. Again, I'll link that below. But um, I found the pins from Pinterest. And I'm going to pin, I'm going to pin, I'm going to link my Pinterest board down below so that you can go and find some of the things that I used in here. Um, but I typed all these up by hand. So if I were having a day where I was really struggling, I would move one of these pages into my emergency room and I would be praying it throughout the day. I would keep coming back if I needed to. I would, um, I've been getting better at really hitting my knees in prayer. And I say that li like figuratively, <laughs> not literally, <laughs> but, um, I have been trying to be really better at that. And so in having this, like visualizing in my head, that this is like the place in my prayer binder that's for like triage makes me feel, I don't know. It makes me feel more empowered. It's more of like my battle station kind of feeling. So I really love that. Um, so if, however, none of that is happening and it's just a regular morning, I'm going to go directly into my daily prayer. Um, this particular divider is, is two different types of scrapbook paper that I um, put together. And then I made this little graphic myself, God Heard You, Just Be Patient. It was a quote I saw on Pinterest, um, but I wanted to change it to the color scheme that I liked. So I, I designed it. <laughs> And I added a honey, of course, and then this is one of the little chipboard pieces from the TRG Simple Stories collection, which I thought was perfect for this page. And here, these are some scriptures I found that were specifically things that I wanted to pray over. So I, I really begin to really appreciate what it means to pray scriptures. So these are things I want to pray for myself that God help me with and so that I am more like him in these areas. And then I started a list of things I wanted to get help with and, and how to be helpful to others. And um, so when I get to this page, I don't pray through every single thing on the list. I'll pick maybe two or three items at the most to pray for myself. So and then I flip the page and I'm coming to the first spread that is for, um, you know, praying each day for my husband. And I decided to put a picture of him in the center to kind of like be a visual to me. I think that when you see a picture of your child or your family member, I feel like it just is a better, it feels like a better connection, I guess, than just a name on a sheet. So that's what I chose to do is put a picture of him on my paper. And then I set up seven little sticky notes around him. And each sticky note is a separate series of like little, like a little prayer. So just in, as an example, you know, asking God to give, you know, give him ears to hear you, speak to him, give him an experience with you, have, a, you know, help to grow a stronger relationship with you. And that's, that's a, a normal prayer that all of us would ask for our husband, you know, is to help him hear, hear you better. Um, so the next day I would then probably hit another sticky note. The following day I'd hit another sticky note. So that was just sort of like my idea there is like a little collage of, of requests, but I only hit one note a day. And I also, um, circle him in prayer. Uh, I got that idea from the circle maker by Mark Batterson, which is a really excellent book. And this particular prayer is Proverbs three, five through six for him. And then up here on this sticky note in the corner, this was a reminder to me to ask God to help me 
better serve him as his partner? Like help me to be a better wife for him. What are these areas I can ask for for me to help him? So, and then the same thing for my daughter. Um, I have a note up here of like how do I be a better mother to her? And then so I have all of these sticky notes um, surrounding her as well. One for each day. Um, a, a scripture that I wanted to pray for her every single day. And then again, how do I be, a, you know, what things can I do to be a better mother? Um, here's speaking of, here's my mother. <laughs> so I have her circled in different prayers. I want to, you know, things I want to pray for her and how to be a better daughter, friend, listening, you know, listening to her wisdom. My mother is a very, very wise person, which is why I pray over her Proverbs because this, my mom is probably the wisest person I have ever known. The one who gets wisdom loves life. The one who cherishes understanding will soon prosper. So that's what I want to pray over her, that God prosper her and all that she does and, um, and heal her heart. Uh, so this page is a friend who um, I have a section back here for my friends. But, I'm, but when somebody, you know, uh, reaches out to me or we're having a conversation and they say, you know, I'm going through something, I'm probably going to end up moving that person from wherever they are back here into a daily, the daily prayer section. So I put her picture on this page, some of the things that I'm praying for, and then praying a scripture over her life. And we'll just check in periodically to see how she's doing. And if yeah. So then I also have been adding little things as I think of them. So I wanted to pray specifically for single moms because I was one and I know how challenging that is. Um, and I, I'm just going to pray for different things about single motherhood and, um, we'll see how that goes. Um, and I wrote down a few other things there as well. And then I started a list of like battle scriptures. So ones that are a little like bit of a reminders of, um, reminders of who God is in, in that need. So depending on what the needs are, I just wanted to have a few there so that I could be praying over what was on this card or praying over a friend or whoever needed it. It was just maybe I wanted to reference it when I was in the emergency room. So I just decided to toss, toss them in here. And then I found this quote on Pinterest and I typed it up and I added a, my, my favorite honey is Rhonda here. I named her Rhonda <laughs> because she looks a bit sassy, but I, um, I typed this up and I put it in here because I think for a lot of us, I think rejection can be very painful. And I think that as women, I think that when we have kind of misunderstandings and our, our relationships um, don't, sometimes we have breakups in our relationships. Um, I, I think that there was something very healing in reading this and that perhaps looking at things differently that instead of being angry at that person, like you failed me as a friend, to look at it that perhaps God simply removed that person from your life. You know, maybe perhaps it was intentional that, you know, you are, you, that person's not in your life any longer. That brought a lot of healing to me personally. It made it feel more about perhaps in God's sovereignty and how he looks at things. He did that for me. And that now that releases me from being annoyed or hurt by that person. And I think that was really helpful to me personally, making that transition in my mind. And so um, I added it in here to remind myself, especially praying over different situations um, that have happened to me, is just kind of thinking through that and praying it for other people as well. Like praying over some of my friends I know that are hurt from the same reason Th that happens more than anything else. I think even in, in our Christianity, even in the church, we still have misunderstandings. We have hurt feelings and rather than let it fester and help, you know, make you bitter, which is what the enemy would want. I wanted to remind myself, I just thought it was a great way of looking at it. And I was like, wow, I'm saving that quote and making sure it gets into my prayer binder. And then I showed you earlier, these particular prayers that I have back here just in case, but um, I sort of, they're benched right now. I don't feel like I need them. So I just kind of pinned them together and put them in the back. So then we have our weekly prayer. So after I've worked through my daily prayers, um, then I hit my weekly. So I would just turn to the day of the week that it is and start praying through. 
Um, this is another one of those graphics that I made by typing up a quote I saw on the internet. And, um, and I really loved this one, although I forgot to write down who said it. <laughs> but, the, but the original uh, graphic is on my board. So again, that will be penned if you're interested in having it yourself. And so I move into my weekly session. So I'm just going to show you each one that I pray through. So on Sundays, um, I will pray for, this is my sweet little girl in Rwanda. Her name is Devotha. And I have been sponsoring her through World Vision since 2013, so about five years ago. And she was a little three-year-old then, and I, every photo I have of her, she looks so sad. This is her very first picture with a smile on her face. So I, I made a copy of it and printed it for my book, and these are things I want to pray for her. Um, and remember to pray for her. Every Sunday, I'm going to pray through for her. Sunday's kind of a bigger prayer day than a lot of other days. So on Sunday, I'm also going to pray for our marriage and just different things like encouraging each other and helping to strengthen each other for our ministry. I'll be praying for this ministry called Troubleshooting for Christ. This is the ministry that's run by my very dear friend and mentor, Miss Craig. She serves widows. So I want to pray for them. And I want to pray for widows and orphans because this was very dear to God's heart. So just in general, pray for them. I'm going to pray for World Vision. I worked for World Vision at one point in my life, and they are a wonderful organization. And um, I want to pray for th them as well. And then I want to pray for children in general that are victimized, whether that's, you know, through sex trafficking and or being abused. I, I just I want to pray for them every Sunday. So I have like six topics on Sunday. So like I said, it's kind of a big prayer day, but it's Sunday, right? So <laughs> it should be a, a bigger day of prayer, I guess. So I added a little extra paper in case I needed some more to pray for. And then on Monday, uh, this is a graphic I found on Pinterest that I loved and I added one of my honeys to it. So Monday, um, Monday prayers are praying for the reset girl as a, as a brand you know, my business and, and ministry and just helping us to strengthen and grow our influence and bring people to us and help lead and guide me into being, um, have a clear message and a clear purpose. And, you know, just um, how to help other people is really my biggest goal here. So help me <laughs> do that. Uh, the First Love Club and, and helping us with our, um, our message and content and, you know, using our a podcast for your glory partnerships. So directing our path, you know, with people that I am partnered with. And so there's about three things I do there. I wanted to point out, I love this little page. This is what I was talking about. This is like a page from a little, a book and it's very thin paper. Like this is something I would, I wish I would have done more is lined the back with more of this kind of stuff, but it was from this old vintage book. And I love that it just, fits in so much with my Monday prayers because it's about community and partnerships and, and that kind of thing. So, and this is again, another quote I found that I added to my, um, to the page. And then we switch over to, um, Tuesday. This is another version of that quote about your calling. That was the original one I did in pink. <laughs> and then on Tuesday, so on Tuesday, I'm praying, um, for, I'm praying for things like God's will to be done. So I found this like list of things that you could pray for because I Googled specifically, what do, what do you pray for? I wanted to fill out this, these sections, but I didn't really, I didn't really know what I wanted to pray for. So I got some ideas off of there and they just, you know, made general suggestions like, you know, Lord, I pray that your name would be exalted. I pray that you'd rise up new leaders and youth, you know, field workers to continue to spread your word. So those type of prayers is what I put there. And I wanted to pray for unbelievers, you know, the, to, instead of getting um, annoyed at people that persecute Christians, I want to have compassion and remind myself that God has compassion and loves them. And so I want to pray for them fervently that they would have their eyes opened and that they would come out of the dark and, and be in the light, which is, you know, how we look at things. So I have definitely have an appreciation for that because although I didn't, I didn't disbelieve in God, I believed in God, but I was definitely not a Christian until I was like 30 years old. 
I didn't want anything to do with the church. I didn't want anything to do with religion. And I don't consider myself a religious person. I consider myself a person of, of faith. Um, I, I very much love the Lord, but I would never have guessed that as hard hearted as I was and as living in the dark as I was, I would never have imagined that I would be so, have so much love for God and want so much to please him and, and, and live differently than I used to. And I have compassion for people who still live in the dark. I was so lost and lonely there for so much of my life. And it's, it's because of that, that I feel so much of a burden and appreciation for how you end up, you know, as an unbeliever, how you end up often feeling very disconnected. And I want to, I want to pray for people in that situation. Well, and then on Wednesdays, I want to, my prayers here are a little bit um, more like worldly prayers. And I found this really inspiring um, scripture in Isaiah. Um, and the government will be upon his shoulders and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government. The fact that it was like his government, his shoulders, I'm like, wow, that's just that really takes a lot of pressure off of us. <laughs> this is his show. And so just having that, finding that, I think that's really kind of what started getting me going. Like I'm going to put these things in here and just, and pray over these things, especially for, um, soldiers. Um, I definitely have a, a family that's been very supportive of the military. So that is important to me too. Um, so on Thursday, I have my friends and I found this little cute uh, card to remind me. So I put pictures of my friends because I had them from my like, photo roll. <laughs> I wish I didn't have to be in the picture with them, <laughs> but um, I, I do have them in here. So I have a little, I have little prayers written out for each one, ones that I wanted to focus on. So they are in here um, in this section. And then I added people um, like listed them out as well, uh, more friends that I could think of. And as I felt like the Holy Spirit was kind of bringing people to mind that I know are having different issues in their life that I should pray for, whether it's like people that have come to a event, like one of my workshops and I got to, you know, meet them and know a little bit more about their life. So I just added them as well. And here's a little honey and some washi, a real simple way to kind of fancy up the paper here on Friday. <clears throat> Um, I added one of our journal cards to some scrap big paper. Um, I have my family. So family day is, is, um, this is my family with Mark. These are all of his grown kids, his two sons and their wives. And he has a daughter, but she was not in the picture with us, but her, here's her little sticky note. So I put sticky notes for all of, um, the kids and all of their, um, so there's prayers for all of them. So on Friday, I would work through this list for them. And then here's my brother and wife and my nephews. And so I would, um, pray through them. Some of them I haven't finished filling out. Um, but I'll be praying for them. And then two of my aunties that I love so dearly, um, they each have a little spot here for me to pray over them. And then here is my dear, 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 um, she's a friend and my mentor, but she feels like my family. So I put her in this section and here's her son who is also our lawyer. And I want to pray for him. And then she's up here under this sticky note. She's the one I mentioned earlier that, um, has the, uh, widow's ministry. And I just love her. I talk to her every Wednesday and we talk about, we have a God report, you know, what has God done this week <laughs> in our businesses? And she's really been mentoring me with, you know, doing business God's way so that she has been a, an answered prayer, having her in my life. Um, here is more family members and just praying for them. And then on Saturday, I have this little section. I actually, um, uh, covered the inside of this divider with a hymnal. So I wish I had done this more is another example. So if, if you're thinking of making your own, consider using thin things to, 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 to line scrapbook paper. Cause I did not like the back. 
If you like the back, then it shouldn't matter at all. You can use both sides and you'll be fine, but I generally don't like the B side <laughs> of scrap wood paper. So that was one of those cases where I just covered it with that. Saturday, I'm praying specifically for um, some churches. Uh, Dr. Tony Evans and Priscilla Shire are the, probably the two greatest influences in my faith walk. And so I pray for them. I pray for the church that we are currently going to while we're here in California. I pray for my church that I used to go to in California and the church in Texas. Um, and Miss pa Pastor Angie, because I went on their leadership cruise and I know her to be a woman of God. So I want to pray over these leaders and influencers um, f for them and for their ministries. And then, um, so at the end of my asking section, whether it was um, like whatever day of the week it was, when I'm done with that, then I would go into the yield. So this was, again, one of the A5 dividers, and all I had to do was just trim it and repunch it. And it ended up being, I have loved this one so much. It's like a little interactive pop-up <laughs> book. <laughs> um, so I'm really happy that I got to reuse it. And so here is where I'm going to listen to God. Um, I wrote out these little conditions for hearing God's voice. This came from a book that I have been reading every single day. It's called Forever Ruined for the Ordinary. And she talks about a lot about hearing from God. So I typed it or I wrote out these to remind myself. I found this on Pinterest that I thought was really good. So in this psalm, um, so I just added it to the, to the yielding part of my time. So I just took a, a regular sheet and put God says, and then just started. I decided that whatever I heard in my head, whether it was me or God, I was just going to start writing it down and kind of like sift through it after the fact. So, um, that's what I have started doing. And I also found these this morning and it's just like three little questions to ask yourself when you hear from God. You know, are, is what you're hearing it is in line with what the Bible actually says? Does it match the overall teaching of God's word on that subject? So it's just like a little double check in your spirit that, are you hearing? And then I was kind of playing with my paper punch buffet here and just kind of, um, which I think is fun, is just kind of randomly putting little embellishments here and there. I have more lined paper back here, another divider, and then I put a copy of this that I printed out on the internet. If you Google the hour that changes the world, a PDF will pop up, like a, a, a listing for a PDF for this document. They don't make you sign up for it, like you don't have to give them your email, they just make the link available and you just click it and the whole document will pop up. And I shrunk it down for the half letter size. So it's very similar, if you're familiar with like Miracle Morning, it's very similar. You have an hour each morning and he has it broken up into 12 five minute segments. So each five minutes he's moving on to one of these topics. That's how he does his prayer hour. And the hour that changes the role is a book written by Dick Eastman, but they made this little guide available on the internet. My mom actually found a copy of that book in the, like a thrift store. So she has, it's so cute because it's like super vintage. So he did this a really long time ago and it's a really great tool. Um, I actually learned about it from Miss Carrie Danker on her site. She talked about it. So I went and looked it up and I have it on my Kindle and the guide just kind of walks you through every little segment, gives you like little scripture ideas, what to do. He talks about like what he does during these five minute increments. And I thought it was wonderful. So if you don't like, um, you know, if you do, if this doesn't speak to you and you want to try this and go, hey, for five minutes, I'll do praise and worship. I'll wait on the Lord. I'll confess my sin. If you like this method, this is a great um, tool that you can get and kind of like maybe I'll just um, use parts of it and kind of create your own God time. But I thought it was a great tool and I just put it back in here just to kind of give me ideas if I wanted to ever um, tweak anything I was currently doing. I had ideas to start with. So that's it. Now it might sound like a whole lot, you know, that I just ran through, but really I timed myself the other morning and without rushing through it at all, I was done with my entire prayer session. Um, you know, that's, that's doing my praise, my repenting, my asking daily and my asking day of the week. And then my, just that part. I'm not counting the yield. I'm just counting the prayer time. I was done in 15 minutes. 
And then the yielding, I didn't time that, but I'm guessing, I can't even guess really. I'm not going to say that I even noticed the time. I, that's, that wouldn't be fair. But I would say that the, the part where I'm just praying and all of that was definitely 15 minutes. So that kind of gives you an idea because I just kind of ran through so much that it might be like, holy moly, I can't do all that every morning. <laughs> But when you really look at it, you know, you're praising, you're, you're repenting, you're asking, you're daily, and then one, you know, one little section here. It really didn't take a long time. You're just talking at a normal rate. And it's really what I feel like the Holy Spirit is also kind of guiding you. Sometimes you might feel like saying more. Other days you may not. So um, what I've noticed, though, is I'm about done in 15 minutes and then do my the yielding session. <laughs> So I hope that gives you ideas. I try to be as open and transparent with what I do and why I'm doing it because I know that there's really, there's a lot of us that where this is kind of a very personal thing. I don't know that we talk a whole lot openly about our prayer time specifically. And, um, and there are different things that we should pray for that maybe our society <laughs> wants us to look at a certain way and our church wants us to look at a certain way. But I am just really trying to dig into how, like how God looks at things. And I think when we do that, I feel like it's sort of, it's like the wheat separating from the chaff. I feel like it just gets down to the basics, which is God has such a, a heart and burden for people. And at the end of the day, that's really all we all are is just people. So to that end, it's really, truly been, I feel like it's really helping me personally in my heart. And I really want to encourage you the same way. You know, if it's helping me, it's certainly going to help others that are hearing, hearing me and watching this video. And I hope that it does. I hope that you really see the, um, I hope that you're inspired by this really, and that you want to whip out, you know, your little paper supplies and, and it's such a simple thing to do. You know, one of these little binders is, I think I paid $5 for this. And then, you know, just use your scrapbook stash if you want to. Or you can just buy a package of dividers. But there are so many ideas on Pinterest. And I'm going to link Carrie's blog and some other blogs that have shared their ideas. So you can see that I did kind of make mine fancy, but that's not the point. This is a tool for your time in becoming a prayer warrior. And if that's important to you and you really want to up your prayer game, I hope that you have found some ideas here um, that will help you. And if not, the links I provide below will help direct you into other inspiration that does. So um, thank you so much for watching another one of my long videos, because <laughs> apparently I don't know how to make any other type. Um, but I am going to continue doing some other videos on my little prayer binder. Um, as you'll notice, there's this kind of blank space here. Um, my friend Tracy is going to do some lettering and I'm going to print it out and get it here on my binder. But I have some other thoughts and other things I wanted to do with my binder and, you know, share that as well. So I truly hope that this blesses you and gets you on that path and to making one yourself. And um, if so, I'd love to hear about it. You know, you can always email me at slapithigh at threesetgirl.com or you can leave a comment below and let me know like, hey, I have a, you know, I have one or, um, and if you have a blog and you've shared yours, I would love to look at it. If you have a YouTube video that you've filmed, please um, link it in the comments below because I will take a look. I absolutely love these type of videos of looking into people's prayer binders. So I hope you liked looking into mine and I will see you guys really soon in the next video. Bye everybody.